Thank you for choosing to watch another free e-learning tutorial from dacanane.com. Today we're looking at the Android app Lensu. Lensu is a multi-page whiteboard app that allows students to add images, annotate each slide using a pen tool, add shapes to highlight key areas of the slide, and add their voiceover for the entire presentation. The completed video can then be shared for publication on the internet. It is a great tool for capturing student voice and is an essential tool for the BYOD classroom. So if this is the kind of tool you need for your class, stick around and let's get right into it. The Lensu interface is really simple. On the right here, if I click on the gear, I can log into my account and check on my subscriptions, etc. On the left at the top, I can view my previous recordings or browse content created by others, organized by subject. To create a new recording, click on the new recording option. The toolbar on the left is self-explanatory. Let's look at the pen. The top slider sets the pen width, and I can set the pen color by using the slider on the spectrum to select the rough color, and the large square to pick the exact hue I require. You can experiment with the pen width that suits you best. Make a few strokes and alter the slider until you get the pen width you prefer. The eraser tool below the pen tool has three options. Linear erase, clear all drawings, and clear all images. Linear allows you to remove individual strokes, and clear all is self-evident. The shapes palette below the fill bucket is a good tool to use. Let's look at the arrow shape. Once selected, just press and drag your finger to make the shape the desired size. To edit the shape, tap it once. The menu at the bottom of the screen allows you to edit the shape. To change the line and fill colors of the shape, use the color palette as with the pen tool. Once you are happy with the color of your shape, just click in some white space to set your choice. To rotate the arrow, click to highlight again and use the rotate menu icon at the bottom of the page. Using the fill bucket, you can change the background color of every slide. Again, using the color palette, you can select block colors or select one of the template options from the boards option at the top. Depending on what the content of the slide is to be, you can set a background appropriate to the content. So for example, lined paper for text, or blueprint paper for diagrams, or even squared paper for maths graph work. And finally, for that retro look, the ubiquitous dirty chalkboard. <laughs> I've not used one of those for over 15 years. To move items on a slide, select it, and then use the move tool to move the item around the slide. This way, the arrow, for example, can be moved to different points of interest in a slide whilst recording. To add text to a slide, click on the text icon, then tap on the slide to start adding text. The keyboard appears and it is then possible to start typing. When completed, tap in an empty space to set the text and hide the keyboard. To edit the text, tap on it. To change the colour of the text, click on the half shaded letter A and using the palette, change the text to your chosen colour. Using the font icon to the right, it is possible to change the font style. To make the text bigger or smaller, use the text icon with the arrows to the left and use the slider to make the text the desired size. Using the toggle handles, it is also possible to resize the text box. To add images to the slide, click on the image icon. You can either take a photo directly with the camera or choose an image from the picture gallery. To select an image, just tap on it. Once it is in the slide, tap on it to move it or resize it. Using the pinch or stretch action with finger and thumb, make the image the desired size and then move the image to the appropriate location in the slide. Whilst you are setting up slides in a presentation, every element on the page can be moved to ensure that the slide layout is appropriate for the information being shared. You can also see that it is better to prepare slides in advance rather than trying to create content and edit the layout at the same time. To add a new slide, click on the right pointing arrow at the bottom of the menu bar and a new slide will be created. Alternatively, click on the new slide icon that appears in the pop-out. You should also use these arrows to navigate between slides if they've already been created when recording a presentation. Now the slides have been prepared, I am ready to record my presentation. Lensu allows me a maximum recording time of 15 minutes. I make sure I am starting at slide 1, 
and then to start recording my screen actions and my voice, I press the record button. The tool selections and menu pop-ups that occur whilst I record are not seen in the final video. I can write freehand as I record or illustrate points on a diagram with the pen tool. I can change the pen size and colour. I can create shapes on the go, but as I've already created an arrow, all I have to do to use it is to click on it, use it and move it around the slide. If I want to rotate it during the presentation, I simply use the menu at the bottom. Again, these menus and toggle points are not recorded in the final presentation. With limited time available to record, it is a good idea to pause the recording between slides. I do this by pressing the record button again to stop recording. Pausing also helps me to gather my thoughts before pressing on. Once I've reminded myself of what I want to say on the next slide, I press the record button again and continue. And I'll repeat this process until I've completed my presentation. Once I've completed recording my presentation, it's time to save it. To save as a draft, click on the floppy disk icon and the incomplete presentation will be saved. This is particularly useful in a classroom. To publish, I click on the green done button at the bottom of the menu bar and follow the prompts to save. To publish to the internet, I first have to have a Lensu account, be logged in and be connected to the internet. My completed video can be watched by clicking on the play icon. Note how none of the pop out menus, toggle points and palettes show in the final video. Because I chose to publish this video, I can no longer edit it. This is a point worth remembering and it makes the save as draft option a key and winning aspect of this app especially when it's compared to other iOS variants. As you have seen, Lensu is a fully featured whiteboard app, and as such, it should be on every Android BYOD device in your classroom. So, if you've not installed it yet onto your own device or recommended that your students install it, you should. Thanks for watching this free tutorial. Your support is important to us and we value your feedback. So please leave a comment below and also don't forget to like us. We aim to produce one tutorial per week, so why not subscribe? You won't regret it. So until our next tutorial hits your feeds, keep practicing.